share with you guys how I color grade in Premiere Pro. I just want to mention I am not a professional. I learned everything here on YouTube and I just want to give back to YouTube and share with you guys how I like to make my looks and color grading is such a specific style and flavor profile. This is just what I like to use. And no, I'm not selling you guys any LUTs. This is just purely all of my secrets being spilled out to you. So let's begin. The software that I'm editing and color grading on is Premiere. Before starting anything, you want to have a very flat picture profile on your camera and that means shooting in log. I've been shooting on the Lumix S5 for the past four or five years. I've been using V-Log because that is the basic log profile. I know in Sony, people like to use S-Log3. That is my recommendation as well. I'm actually shooting this video on Sony and I'm in S-Log3. Make sure you're shooting in log. Before diving in, you want to start off with color correction, which is exposing and your white balance. I'll usually make all of my grading on an adjustment layer. You must use adjustment layers. It will be so nitpicky if you're just color correcting on every clip. I usually like to have something in the image that is white, so like the shirt, and use the eyedrop image to press on my shirt in order to properly white balance. All right, in order to convert my log footage into Rec. 709 format, I will use a LUT, which is a lookup table. And this is just a basic LUT. It is not something that you buy. It's something that is free on any of your camera websites. On Panasonic's website, I pulled up this V-Log LUT that will automatically convert this into Rec. 709. Next, what I like to do is bring up my saturation. I'll usually bring it up to around 150 because it comes out pretty unsaturated saturated when you're shooting in log format. Okay, let's talk about the secondary adjustments. I will usually use my curves to adjust my hue, my saturation, and luma. So starting off with the hue versus hue curve, I will usually adjust my blues slightly more teal, and then I'll adjust my reds and oranges because sometimes on the ND filter that I'm using, and I'm always using an ND filter, it kind of changes the color of my skin a little, so I'll usually adjust it back to my normal skin color by using the hue versus hue curve and the hue versus saturation curve. I will usually adjust my reds and my oranges on the hue versus sat curve as well. And then I'll usually try to desaturate my blues slightly and I will saturate my greens a little more. I really, really like when greens are saturated for some reason. Um, I think it looks kind of similar to the film look. But once again, it really depends on your skin tones and you can use your histogram and the scopes to really fine tune things and make sure your skin tones are fine. I usually won't really touch the hue versus luma curve. Sometimes I will try to darken my greens a little because feel like it makes it look slightly more fuller. Okay, so the basic thing to do in the color wheels is to bring your shadows to the blue side and your highlights to the orange. And these are very, very small adjustments. Now the midtones is where you can get creative with it, whatever look you wanna go for. My natural look is going slightly towards the red and the pinks. Okay, now for the HSL secondary, I usually won't really tweak this, but you can basically isolate any color in the image. So if I just select the oranges and the reds, which is usually my skin, I can pretty much fine tune the temperature and tint to really make sure my skin looks fine. Okay, so finally, contrast. I'll usually go back to the curve sections and adjust the RGB curves to make an S curve. This is standard so that you're not ruining your highlights or your shadows. Everything is kind of based off of the mood that you're trying to go for. So let's say you want it to be colder and sadder and depressing. We're gonna make it more blue. If we want it to be happier or if the sun just rose or you want to make it look like the sun just rose, we'll bring it back towards the oranges and make it look warmer and more positive. So pretty much what I like to do for this is I'll go back to the basic correction and I'll adjust the temperature to either more orange or blue. Okay, finally, after everything, I'll make one more adjustment layer and put this on top of my entire timeline and I'll adjust the luma versus saturation curve and what I'll do is I'll make two dots at the ends, bring them down. This will basically keep your blacks black. This is what I make sure to do in every video. Okay, the reason why I'm making this video is because I'm actually going to be switching to DaVinci soon. I have recently switched back to Sony and I want to really level up my color grading and I think Premiere doesn't really do a good job of exporting with the same color settings as what you were editing with and it's pretty annoying. I feel like Premiere is just not as advanced when you color grade. DaVinci is a lot easier also um, to make everything look good and really fine-tune adjustments. So I'm making this video more so just to show you guys you can color grade in Premiere and how to color grade but I am thinking about switching my, I guess, editing 
format. Yeah, we'll see. But that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a like if you did. I am not a professional, I want to mention. I feel like I still have a lot to learn when color grading, but it is fun. I think it's one of the funnest part about editing. It really just transforms everything, especially when you see the before and afters. I genuinely don't think there is a right or wrong way to color grade. It is definitely just a color preference. Let me know in the comments what you want to see from me next, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.